So. Yeah, it's going to be one of those interviews. <laughs> interviews going great. By the way, if you want to come on the show and have some fun, whether virtually or in person, hit me up using my email address or the Room 6 social media link down in the description. That's also where you find ways that you can support the channel and all the other things I'm getting it up to. I've got a couple of podcasts. I live stream stuff. So, uh, you know, check it out. And I would love it if you want to feel free to like, like, share, wave flowers around, subscribe, all that stuff. That's what Christian did on stage, but with his guitar. A little less graceful. The stakes were way higher. The stakes were way higher. This video is brought to you by Stand Up To Cancer. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and my guests. And my guests today are a local queer-fronted indie alternative rock band that performed at the Room 6 Rocks Summer Showcase, I'm sorry, uh, Spring Showcase at Hennessy's Tavern down in Fremont. Highlight of the evening as far as I'm concerned. Dang. Two of the members of the band are actually Room 6 alumni. And uh, so they've been here before, but uh, now we get to see, uh, you know, what they're doing now. And that's awesome. They just got back from their Juneteenth Freedom Tour through Arizona. And now they're and also back in Vegas. And uh, yeah, please welcome to the channel. Kook, say hi. Hey. What's up? Que pasa? <laughs> First of all, Kook wasn't originally a band. It was just you, correct? Yeah, but that was always my vision for the project, to have mm. other musicians play with me. I um, I had gone through a long period of not performing my original music, and I kind of had to re-establish what my vision was, mm -hmm. and so I, I came up with a new name for my project. And, it, and Kook is actually an acronym, which stands for... Kill him with kindness. Yay, yay. And uh, I, I or just with knives. With... <laughs> no, that also Kill was everyone what? with knives. Yes. There you go. And now I'm demonetized. Thank you. That, that's us on Halloween. <laughs> um, you know what? I, I've been remiss. Welcome to the channel officially. So rude. I know. Hi. Clunk 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 clunk. And here we go. Ew, there's soda in my alcohol. <laughs> Somebody put soda in his alcohol stream. Anyway, for those of you that don't know who Kook is, thank you for watching. Go ahead and introduce yourselves, tell them who you are, and I'm going to get the backup audio started that I forgot. Okay, you go oh first. Oh my god, I just noticed it. My name is Chris, 27, lead guitar. I'm Angel, I'm not from Earth, and I play the drums. My name is Spencer, I write the songs, mostly. And play guitar and sing. And a little bit of synth action, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, where did I like go? Just a minute. Joshua, oh, I sometimes play us? bass. That's, that's a new thing. <laughs> yeah, singing, some but... new developments going on here. Yeah. Everybody sings. I'm back. That we do. What I miss. All right. So. Everything. Um, speaking of the name, you personally have gone through a name evolution a little bit. Uh, yes. Because when, this is Spencer, when Spencer was on the show or many, many moons ago, as one of my very OG early Room Sixers, uh, you went by Silverscape. Oh, yeah, that was that was my previous original project. So uh, that was also, I, I guess, alternative rock. It was, it was more on the dark-ish side. Right. The dark, creepy side of alternative rock, and this is more like pop and soul influenced alternative rock yeah that's i, I remember because there was a music video at the end of that interview from uh Soulscape, and i remember it and i was like it's there's a lot of familiar stuff is there now but obviously it's different because you've evolved you mean the sound of the music yeah the sound yeah. of the music yes mm -hmm. um how was tour any like horror stories or real <laughs> highlights because arizona be hot and stuff there was a fire <laughs> <laughs> was it before before or after you played um we were in the middle we were not related to the fire let's just <laughs> put that out there <laughs> we were trying to find spots a we were trying to pass the time during the day because we had nowhere to go b we were trying to find spots to like set up and do a like a 
a gorilla jam session and, and record it. And this spot that we found, there was a maintenance man working on this apartment building. I don't know what he was doing, but like he walked away and I was like, there's a fire. <laughs> I, oh, yeah. Why not? Yeah. I about that. Sorry, I'm getting a little wavy over here. <laughs> I'm just saying, maybe maybe get in camera. That's all. <laughs> um, so, so you, was that like the craziest thing that happened on tour, or was there anything else, good or bad? Um, there was, there was a lot of. I have my own personal stories. I. Oh yeah. Dude, I freaking I oh my swung God. my guitar. All right, this this is a good one. We were playing, and it got to a very chaotic part in the set, and I picked up my guitar by the strap. Oh, no. And I sw- while it was still plugged in, <laughs> swung it around my head about six times, and uh, I was all wrapped up in the business. And uh, you love watching I, that footage and having a good laugh. I still need that. I, 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 I feel like I'm being left out. I want the video. I was. I was. <laughs> Say no to drugs, kids. I was scared and enthralled all at the same time. I was like, "What the fuck is about to happen?" I mean, I'm not gonna break character for our audience, but like, what the fuck is about to happen? Wait, at one point, at one point, I looked back at the audience. Curious. I looked back at the audience, and they were all like, <laughs> I think "Wait, wait, to catch the guitar." Right. They were, they were waiting for you to do your Chris Novacellic impression, throw the bass in the air, and catch it on your head. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, I that. haven't seen that. You, seen oh, that. Um, way back when MTV and VH1 had you know music videos. The um, Nirvana that was never happened. Nirvana was playing. Uh, I think it was the VMAs, and they were told they couldn't play whatever their particular song was they wanted to play. So they came out and played something else, but like as aggressive as possible. And then they went into that song anyway or something. Mm. But at one point, I forget what song it is. is it I'm, I'm sure I put a clip up now. Uh, I forget what song it is, but at one point, Chris Novotny just takes his bass off, heats it up into the air, <laughs> goes to catch it. And it hits his head first, and he just crumples. And the band's playing, and no, not even like, a, and he just gets up back up. What and, the fuck? Yeah, that's yeah, fuck. That adrenaline. That is, yes, when the adrenaline hits, yeah. you're pretty much a tiger. When the but, adrenaline but hits. But I mean, older, yeah. older Chris Novacellic. Now you look at him, and you listen, you're like, yeah, I can see that brain trauma. <laughs> yeah, he never recovered fully. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. So I wanted to talk. I've asked you this question before. I asked you this a few years ago. But really, I want to hear this, see if it's changed at all. I want to talk earliest musical influence. Okay, and I mean, what is that first moment you remember saying, I want to do that? For me, uh, it was Guitar Hero 3, honestly. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. Good start. I'm, I'm, yeah, I was 13. I got it for Christmas. And then when I saw like the intro, that opening scene where it's like the eyeball, but it's dressed as Slash. And he's like playing this crazy solo. I was just like, "You just want to be an eyeball." I'm hooked. I want to be a sweaty shirtless man. <laughs> I want to be a sweaty shirtless eyeball wearing a leather jacket. <laughs> nice. What no, but the music and everything. Yeah, I think we've all felt that. What about? Uh, it's really hard for me to find an origin because always since I was a kid, I'd be like, I think drums was my first fascination. So I just be like grabbing sticks and shit and like hit stuff in the house. And so drums was the first thing I picked up, but then I got addicted to guitar somewhere along the line. Now I'm back on drums. Mm. But the very first moment, hard to pin down. Same here, definitely. There were a few key moments for me, but the moment where I first started my own personal journey of music discovery, not like from my parents or anything, but... Oh, sorry. We were, we were having a moment. <laughs> was... A, um, a, 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 B conversation. So right. Go ahead. Sorry. My, my best friend in sixth grade introduced me to Paramore, and that was the first band that I was like obsessed with. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Sorry to copy you there. <laughs> so, Flex on my yeah, it's going to be one of those interviews. <laughs> it's going great. By the way, if you want to come on the, sh- the show and have some fun, it, whether virtually or in person, hit me up using my email address or the Room 6 social media link down in the description. That's also where you find ways that you can support the channel and all the other things I'm getting it up to. Uh, I've got a couple of podcasts. I live stream stuff. So, uh, you know, check it out. And I would love it if you want to feel free to like like, share, wave flowers around, subscribe, all that stuff. That's what Christian did on stage, but with his guitar. A little less graceful. The stakes were way higher. The stakes were way higher. (laughs) (laughs) Noise. Just by the strap. He does not have strap locks. Okay. Let's make that clear. Oh, so you were playing with fire. (laughs) 
Oh, no, and literally, man. I played his guitar one time and it just fell off the strap, and I was just holding. Well, it. we've all done that, yeah. So like, with you whipping it around like that. I just knew if I can keep a constant force going, it would just the centrifugal lock in. force. Yeah, it would lock in, and it wouldn't. But if I at any point broke <laughs> broke the cycle, it would just hit me in the face, and I'd probably fall off the stage. And I'll you would you deserve what, it. Though. I would, but... And I, then you'd have another just, scar. Uh, another, you'd have another slit in the eyebrow. <laughs> Dude, as, as, frightening, as frightening as it was, I enjoyed that, Christian. Yeah. Because Christian's usually there, like, just killing it, but not a whole lot of motion. All of a sudden, there was just, like, this tornado of Christian. I was like, where was that at my showcase, <laughs> mister? I'm glad you didn't do that, because that small that stage was pretty small. Yeah, I saw oh, it yeah. very cool. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to get me. Suddenly, Spencer goes down. <laughs> bing. <laughs> um, Vocalist. Speaking of Spencer... <laughs> Yes. Can you talk to me about Girls Rock Vegas Camp with uh, every woman? Oh, wow. Okay. That was a long time ago. Yes, it was. Hard work. Um, Hard work. So, Girls Rock is a camp that empowers young girls to learn music. Um, it is, is it all female led. Yeah, it's okay. still going. And my all-female cover band at the time we had each taken on a role in that uh in that camp to coach the students uh i was a guitar instructor very cool yeah i couldn't tell from uh there was a group picture uh, which looked like it was like you and the the, the band and like a bunch of students Mm. and i couldn't tell at that point whether you were students was this like a music academy or what now that you said that totally makes sense Mm. so and you had the hair Oh yeah, I think I know what picture you're talking about. Actually, that was that picture was a a pride event. Of course it was. <laughs> By the way, at the time of recording, we just came out of June, so happy late pride. Yes. 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 And you were a Barbie? Huh? Oh, you posted there, one of those like <laughs> you took a picture of inside a Barbie box at like the movie or whatever. Oh my! My high school friend did that of me. Right. Yeah. I was like. I could, I could see it. Yeah. <laughs> what was your Barbie name? <laughs> we don't talk about the Barbie. <laughs> I, I don't know. Badass Barbie. <laughs> I, I'm so far removed from that world. Right. Okay. Well, that's what I like to do. I like to dig up the old skeletons. and. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and then one more for you before we move on to some other victim, okay? Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm nervous now. No, no. And by the way, stick around. We're going to be singing a couple songs from them upstairs. One of which, someone sings in part French. And uh, because someone also lived in Paris for a while. I did. Tried that whole thing. I was wondering, do you have a pro and a con for anyone that was thinking of moving to Paris? So, in Paris, it, the inner city is very expensive. So, a lot of people that um, work there have, like community and <clears throat> recreational activities in Paris. They live in the suburbs of Paris and most people don't have cars, so it takes like anywhere from 30 minutes to 2 hours to travel into Paris for some people. So it's kind of hard to hang out with friends because everyone lives so far apart usually. But the pros is that the ambiance of the city is just unbeatable like the architecture is beautiful the rhythm of and movement of the city the the trees the huge parks the the people on the street are there's always something happening on the street some some art some music you know it does seem to me that paris especially but european like major tourist spots they seem to be almost more the city that never sleep as opposed to new york or vegas hmm you know, because, I mean... They do close things at, like... Well, okay, granted. I, I shouldn't say <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It oh. depends on the place. Whereas That's... at Vegas, you literally can go at 2 in the morning and see somebody perform music. Many places. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And buy many things. Um, <laughs> Angel. Angel. Angelito. Yes. So, he was on here a while ago, uh, promoting really more of his solo project, which is called... Exist more. Exist more, which is a kind of a whole, really philosophy and a media thing, and, and just all of it. But can you talk to me about Save Ferris with Scotty Dub? Oh God! Because you played drums for that, didn't you? I did. 
I was actually um, really happy for I, I did I, I saw the flyer. I was like, "Good job, Scotty. Good job." And I, I didn't realize that he was bringing like the whole band thing. Is that um, what happened? Uh oh. Here we go. I feel like this is one of those. I don't want to shame the venue, but that whole thing was a shit show. Oh, I know the venue you're talking I about. I don't really have <laughs> much positive to say about that entire show. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't even cool. Steve Ferris like, was awesome. Steve yeah, Ferris I was like, was awesome. It, j- were Fuck they that venue? Well, <laughs> then let's. <laughs> we're still a rock and roll band, baby. <laughs> I, I have I have my own stories about that particular venue. We're not. Oh, that's okay. we're not. That's not why we're here. I wanted to know, like, I've. I've had the uh, pleasure of opening for a big name band, and literally the singer couldn't have been bothered. The band, like we, I was I was twenty two. The band was like eighteen, and so they had to leave as soon as we were done. They couldn't be in until it was time. That kind of thing. And I went to introduce as the singer. You know, hey, we're, we're opening, and he, he couldn't not even not even have the time of day for me. Um, and, and we could talk off, off camera, but I was wondering what your experience with. Did you get a chance to talk to anybody from Safe Ferris, or did they just take over the green room and that was it? No, nope. no, nope. <laughs> yeah, because I know that venue and that sometimes national touring acts they basically nope they got the green room and no one's allowed in. Oh yeah, and I always think that's stupid. I was kind of I was kind of in and out. I was just I was really disenchanted with the with the yeah. scenario we were dealing with. How late? Uh, how late did the show the start? Stage, so I just kind of <laughs> how late did the show start? Uh, we actually started early, I think. Oh, huh? yeah. At that place? Or something. Yeah. Well, okay. that was that was part of the headache that we had to deal with. Was they were like, uh, okay, oh, like, it was. Hey, we like, know you don't go on till nine, but can you go on at eight? Yeah, thing? they were like, you're gonna play for a half an hour, and then like, okay, you go on at this time, and then they were like, okay, you can go on early. Actually, no, never mind. Start your regular time, and then as soon as we walk out oh, the stage, no. they're like, "No, just play now." And then they so they yo yo. And then they you. cut us off halfway through our set. Oh fuck! And where they cut us off was where we we're actually supposed to start our set. Stop. So they cut us off halfway through at our actual start time, and like I literally, just, I packed up my shit, I left. I was like, "I'm done with this venue." Yeah. <laughs> um, but Saint yeah. Ferris was cool. I got to watch them while they did their uh, sound uh, check. Sound check, and they sounded awesome. I just oh, right. I left. I was like, this just killed my whole mood. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> but yeah, I was just, I had to talk, to, I had to ask you about it, because I was like, that's, anybody that knows 90s music at all knows Safe Ferris. Oh, yeah. I was like, that's kind of a big deal, so. Yeah, they're fun. All right, um, sticking with you. Uh-oh. I know from experience, you are a multi-instrumentalist. You're also a, ma- a multi-band performer and is a band whore. So yes. <laughs> can, you shout out, can you shout out all the acts you're part of? Not counting you. Uh, presently, uh, Kook and I do guitar with Nashing. Uh, I do sub on bass mainly with Stanley Avenue. And, um, that's actually it right now. Scotty Dub, sometimes? Not no? anymore. Oh, not after that. <laughs> Sorry, Scotty. Um, real quick, isn't Nashing broken up? Nah. Considering that their, their front people moved? Yeah, but I mean, Nashing is like a family that it really is. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Stretching across country. So, like, we actually get together in, like, the VR world now and get to hang out. The VR world. Yeah, I'm going to go out there, actually, in uh, October, I think is the plan, to spend some time with them. So, oh, I where? actually get to, like, jam. Uh, New Hampshire. Mmm. That's far. Go to New Hampshire. Because yeah. <laughs> when, when I think rock rock bands, I think New Hampshire. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right <laughs> so on. So, we're going to think of Nashing now. Yeah, right. Well, it's like uh, Heidi from the Cheeks. M- Chica. Texas. Texas. And I was just right. like, what? Yeah. Why? Anyway. Um, one last one for you, and then we'll take a, a quick little little moment here before we move on to Cristiano. Tell me about the Chiba Hut Bar Diary. Chiba Hut Bar Diary. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, I, I've so never I've I've been to that Chiba Hut many times. I've never yeah. saw it. So not all Chiba Huts have this, but some Chiba Huts have like a diary. You have to ask about it because it's not out in the open, but they'll pull it out from like under wherever they hide it. And it's just a diary that you can write something or draw pictures. Most people draw stuff, but there's one, the Durango Chiba Hut in Las Vegas. There's a two-page drawing by me. A two-page? Yeah. yeah, I took it just two pages of it. Because why not? <laughs> yeah, landscape, bro. Huh. Had to take the whole thing. I'll have to remember that next time I'm there for a show. <laughs> Do it. So, as I mentioned, I'm going to take a quick little break here. Uh, we have a message from Future Josh. If it sounds interesting at all, then go ahead and uh, click the link down in the description. Um, also, close break. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. 
Generally, I'm an easygoing guy with love for most people and things. But you know what I really hate? Fucking cancer. Like many of you, it's affected my family too, and it really needs to go. In fact, there will be 5,200 people diagnosed with cancer today alone. That's why I'm partnering with Stand Up To Cancer. Stand Up To Cancer funds and develops the newest and most promising cancer treatments to help patients today. They dramatically accelerate the rate of new discoveries by connecting top scientists in unprecedented collaborations to create breakthroughs. Their innovations lead to better cancer preventions, diagnoses, and treatment, which means that we can help save lives now. They're committed to funding ambitious and robust research and awareness efforts focused on incorporating health equity in cancer care for the benefit of all patients facing cancer. The best part, 100% of your donations support Stand Up To Cancer and its collaborative cancer research programs. Just for watching this video, and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 10% off your first order when you sign up for email. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel and the cancer fight. Thanks to Stand Up For Cancer for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back, and uh, actually, have one more question for you. Uh oh. I was wondering. Fuck, I knew it. No. <laughs> what the hell is your problem with my producer? Last time uh, he was here, he started a fight with my producer. Movie magic. Whoa, hold up. Who wants to trust me? <laughs> hey, I need to speak with the producer. It was at this moment that he knew. He ripped my clothes off when I wasn't looking. All I want is to be informed that my clothes are going to be ripped off and I don't get violent. But if it happens without me knowing, I get violent. All right. Well, I, 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 had, I let him go. Got a new producer back there. All right, good. They are amazing. So, uh, moving on. Where? By the way, as I mentioned earlier, if that sponsor spot that you just suffered through, you know, sounded interesting at all, please consider clicking the link down below to get it, uh, you know, th to go to their page and, and get the service or the product or whatever. It will help me out. It will help you out. Everybody wins. Christian. Hello, hello. Mitchell Akon to uh, Vegas, huh? Oh, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mitchell Akon. Yeah. Some were were you moved? Like, you were a little kid? or Yeah, you... I was moved. I uh, I was moved. Uh, you know, so oh, you do with that information what you will. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I I'm, was moved. <laughs> I, was, I was five. I didn't have any say in the matter. I'm just here. Um... Yeah, I've lived here. I was pretty much uh, raised in Las Vegas, um, in Summerlin, actually. And then I moved to Southwest. Uh, in the Southwest, I discovered rock and roll music by way of Guitar Hero. Three. And, <laughs> three. <laughs> with Slash. Shout out to my boy Slash. Yeah. Slash's eyeball. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I mean, it, it was just kind of such a... According to where you said you've lived, it was like I lived in Mexico and Vegas. There was no in between. Yeah, there was no. There was just both ends of the spectrum. Just right. On. Was that a poverty too? Was that a military move or no? No, no. My parents aren't in the military. It was just a uh, economic move, I guess. So right it made on. more sense to be out here, as many uh, many immigrants can uh, attest to. So yeah, um, when I discovered rock and roll, I just made it my life's goal to start a band. So I went, I was in and out of bands, and then I, I um, linked up with uh, a Latin metal band, me and uh, my buddy Elijah. He started that. Wait, which one? It was called the Shogun Music. This was like in... Okay. I thought... Uh, Shogun music. I've never heard you describe that band as a Latin metal band. Well, this is the thing. It threw uh, me off just now. With the name like Shogun. <laughs> yeah, right, right. We're everything, man. We're a black round. We are the world, bro. You know, so... <laughs> um, no, but Eli... Uh, my best friend Eli, he plays a nylon string guitar and uses a lot of like flamenco techniques. Mm. And then I, you know, more distorted, so hence the metal part. Right on. Um, but I've had a lot of good luck and good fortune with these guys here, you know, like just showing up every week. It has been so great for me. I've, I've seen Spencer perform solo for so long and then suddenly, oh yeah, I have a band by the way. And to, when you when you all came out, it was just like, oh, I'm so glad you like it, man. Thank that you. is what's been missing, and I'm so glad. Every time I see like we're playing here, we're playing here, it, it makes me very happy. Thank Aww. you. To, to know that we move people, awesome. to know that we move people to that extent is like yes. all that. 
Well, all the validation I need. Speaking of moved, you definitely need to stick around for their performance upstairs because that's what you seem to write is music to move people and take transport them to the world you're singing about. Uh, that's fuck fun. yeah. yeah. Well, you, could ask you know what? You did so good here. <laughs> Wow! Oh. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Mom. Do you one of these. <laughs> oh my God, Which one time. is the next bride? Christ! <laughs> Not, <laughs> Not me. <laughs> um, you didn't even notice that was missing, did you? I did actually. Did you, I did. Oh, I clever. saw it. I was like, "What's he doing?" You're not that clever. Hey, I would have been observant and said something about it. I'm just you saying. know. Wow. I just like to sit in the background and let things play out. Yeah. All right. Everybody, do the robot. Anyway. No, I don't talk about work. This robot dream. <laughs> so, second with Christian. Which which in your mind is better? Deftal or Pyramid? Deftal or Pyramid? Yeah. I'm very sorry, but I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> Solid answer. Great. I'm not going to pretend to know because I'll look like On your Facebook page, you checked in to oh, both Def of them. Tell. Def Tell. It's T-A-L. Okay, yeah. Definitive Talents or Pyramid Studios. Yeah. I don't know. I still don't know the Pyramid, but I know Def Tell. Well, you checked in there like I figured, figured you must have. That must have been like a during a, uh, a, a Neon City cover band uh, rehearsal. That was probably around that time. Okay. I checked in there, but um, that was a cover band that I was in three years ago um, with uh, Definitive Talents. Um, because it's in Montana, it's in Missoula, Montana, home of Hank Green. Hope, hope you get better soon. Oh, I had a feeling you were talking about that. That is my good friend Paul Lenahan. Ah. That's his. That's his studio. So um, you checked in. I was in Montana. I was in Missoula okay. uh, a year ago. So I must have. I, I guess I must have been there. But I but mean, I honestly, cause since you had moved basically from Mexico to here, I was like, why would he go to Montana to record? So I had to ask, like, what you know, brought that up? Funny enough, I guess my friends just made a very Kanye West move and just set up a studio out mm. in the open country, and it's inspiring out there, man. So I have actually two friends that um, are recording artists out in Missoula. Shout out to Missoula. There's yeah. a lot of talent out there. Um, but yeah, Paul Linehan is one of them, and then my my other friend, Josh Gusky. So I like his name. Yeah, he's a solid dude. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the story right behind on. that. Last question for you, and then we're going to move on to a couple of uh, usual interview questions, and we'll get to that performance. What was, if you can remember this, what was the hardest question on your 2019 U.S. citizenship test? Oh. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. When you leave, take someone with you. Welcome to the shit. <laughs> the hardest show. question was: <laughs> the hardest question was, are you sober? because <laughs> your boy was partying when i got the news no i'm kidding that didn't happen um, I, I can imagine that's a question though that's like, question number record. one question number one name question number two are you currently sober are you currently loaded <laughs> yeah. yes. See, i mean yes <laughs> i don't know dude it was just like it, the, the test wasn't hard for me because it was just shit that i learned in elementary school so none of it was really difficult um geez i don't even really remember the test bro um if you want to feel um, like you didn't pay attention in history class look at the u.s citizenship test and you will be quite surprised at some of the questions you'll be like i i, yeah. I don't know this what did astonish no me is that my parents both took the test and i remember them like coming up to me and asking me like basic american knowledge you know like how many stripes are there on the flag and how many stars my mom's like how many stars are there on the flag i'm like shit bro I don't know, mom, but uh, we're gonna figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that was my next. I was gonna follow up with: Did your parents also, you know, get get nationalized? I yes, guess, yes. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, we all pretty much received our citizenship well, uh, well, at the same time. So, you know, we're just out here spreading the seed. More. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in Hell yeah! That's Good night, everybody. Sowing, sowing the seed. Excuse me. Sowing, sowing the seed. <laughs> So in the scene. Oh, Important I mean. distinction. That's not spread. Mean. Sorry. My mind, my mind <laughs> is <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> Spreading too. My mind is elsewhere. Wow. <laughs> you cut that out or you can't? No. <laughs> that's <laughs> standing. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Oh my God. So. <laughs> interview's going great. So. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Stop me if you heard this one. No. <laughs> it's not Halloween yet. Anyway. Yeah. So this is a question for all of you. This is a question I ask of all my prey. This question that we all hate to get, and I apologize in advance. You OG room sexers, you know what's coming. 
How would you define your band's musical style? Go. Oh, we're ready Fuck for this you. one. Although I, I kind of did it in the intro, but, you know. Hit him with it. What's your, what's your elevator Spencer pitch? Spencer and I were actually talking about this last night, so I'll, I'll just let Spencer throw it out there for you. Queer I mean, AF. Just I, I feel I'm like we're kind of like pop rock at this point. Yeah. I would disagree with you. In in some aspects, I think our music could be under the pop umbrella. As individuals, we very obviously do not come from pop backgrounds. But I think that a lot of the songs that we make, not all of them, but some of them are very accessible to like the general public right what's what are your well, when i, I, when, I, I hear pop like punk, when i hear pop punk when i hear when i hear pop punk having reviewed your music not pop before punk. no but did i say punk i meant rock okay but having heard your music and reviewed it multiple times on this channel uh and, and uh ha, about to edit a few songs from you performed here when I hear pop rock, yours is deeper than that. Yours is more layered and transcendental. Wow. Or transcending. It, because pop rock... That's I, a great fucking word. Yeah, honestly. Tra- yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if transcendental is, is, is what I meant. Because transcendental to me is more of like Beatles playing the sitar. It kind of, you know, stoner, kind of, we're, you know, we're on acid and, and we're listening to music kind of. You but there's emotional Spencer depth. Keys, you but know. yeah, right. But but transcending, on the other hand, as mm-hmm. I as I said, I think that your music has that ability to, like, people shut up and mm. watch you play, and you have no idea how powerful that is. And I think I told you the last time you played, a, you played a, at one of the showcases back when it was the Artisan Hotel before it's the Lexi. You played right before you moved to Paris, mm. and you played that song that. Uh, I, I love you, I have to go. Yeah. I love you, comma, I have to go. <laughs> That's a whole Check. inside joke. Um, and I I never do this. I, I, I put my camera down and I stopped and I just sat down and just watched you play. And, yeah. and heard it because it, there was this, this, mo- this, this thing about it that was just like, I want to make music like that. And, you know, <laughs> I want somebody to sing a song like that about me. And... <laughs> But also being a musician and, you know, uh, knowing how to put a song together, there were, I, I was like, I, yes, like there are certain songs where you listen to her, you're like, this resonates with me because I wish I could write this. Hmm. Wow, man. That's... But I don't have the life experiences you have huh. and vice versa. So I feel like transcending or I, I, Lilting keeps popping in mind, and I don't know why. What? Lilting. What, what, what is that? Lilting. What, what is the is definition, that? please? <laughs> Just kind of floating around. Lilting. Oh, but that's not right. Yeah. Totally that's not right. So, that's the word for I, 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 well, I agree with what you said, but I would say maybe not pop rock. Okay. It's maybe. Yeah, pop. I mean, that's why our original label. Mm-hmm. Fucking hate labels. Anyways, yeah. our original label was indie alt rock because it. Our. Our discography, if you will, we don't have any music released yet, but our our catalog is is very nuanced. We all have eclectic influences, and we felt that indie, alternative, and rock kind of summarized it in yeah. a, I, a way for the hard. industry. I, I would use I would use eclectic if you, if someone if you're given that elevator pitch. Mm. I would say eclectic, <laughs> eclectic, and um, I think you use transcending, but I mean, there is that line of like, okay, how much do I talk? How much do I to encapsulate, talk about to, us? To encapsulate this all, we are a cringe core band. Nice. <laughs> yeah, cringe core for sure. <laughs> anyway, we're the first Vegas is first and only cringe core <laughs> group. That's our uh, we, inside joke. We coined that ourselves. Sorry, I'm yeah. really tapping on this mic. But, yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for that. I was really beating my chest there because I was so excited. <laughs> he was so like, so, cringe core pride. So, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> audio guy. The cringe core audio guy. Sorry. Right there. <laughs> I would say honestly, uh, Cage the Elephant, um, Imagine Dragons. Even we were talking Actually, about that one last Yes, night. have a, have a few of those. Like, it, well, we kind of like this and this and this. Or if they this 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 had a baby yeah. or yeah. here's here's yeah. my list. We could we could move to a pop. That's element. it. I should I, ask I could that. See that. I could Instead see. of saying how would you define your band's musical style, I would say if you if you know what are the three bands that 
you know, influenced that's, your sound. Yeah, that's, that's what a we better think question. about first. Like, there you go. Sound like, so. um, Cage yeah. the Elephant, Dance Gavin Dance, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Fire. Deadass. No. I'm not familiar with Deadass. Kate- <laughs> <laughs> that was a band name. <laughs> Circle well. Survive, Dance Gavin Dance, Cage the Elephant. There you go. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. yeah. You and know Red what? Red Hot Chili Peppers. Because we like right <laughs> Stick around and judge for yourself. Feel free to drop in the comments who you think they sound like. And uh, be descriptive, but nice. So, one last question. Be mean. Yeah. yeah Live a little. Engage the yeah. algorithm. Just be real. Be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're a dick. Come on. All right. I think we're scared. One last question. You made it. Yay. <laughs> Ready? Yes. Yeah. I think no. so. Uh, are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I just dated myself really badly. Yeah. This is another question I ask of all my prey. Um, oh, your prey? Yes. <laughs> Why'd you say that in such a prey tone of voice? <laughs> no, we're both. <laughs> your prey? <laughs> oh, I'm in good company. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Ew! <laughs> oh, hey! Hi! Hey. Hey. Everybody clears out of the camera. <laughs> There's the intro clip. Some people, yeah, some people will know this one. <coughs> Caught. Caught. You'll know that. Woo! All right. All right. <laughs> All right. One last question. We're going to circle back to that uh, earliest musical influence question. Yes. Yes. Not the other way. You said yes, I'm, like it was the 1800s. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> we're going to circle back to that earliest musical influence question. Let's pretend we're talking to little you. Okay. Uh-huh. And really what we're doing is we're talking to early to like beginning musicians, the ones who are like, how do I sound like you? Oh. Um, and <laughs> sorry, how do I sound like you? Oh. <laughs> right. we, There's the phone. That was a good dramatization. <laughs> yes. So yes. what is one thing that you wish you could go back and tell little you, hey, you're going to need to know this about, about going down this twister road that is music and don't say change your strings. So. Tell them. Teach yeah, the children. Your fucking strings. Um, <laughs> Don't. Just run. Don't I do would, it. I would say fuck what everybody else thinks and be adamant about your decision. At 12 years old, I already knew music was what I wanted to do with my life. And I did not have the support from my family in order to kind of jumpstart me along that path. And I, I feel that that hindered me, but you know what? Everything happens for a reason. I wouldn't be uh, where I'm at in my soul growth if I hadn't, if, I, if, if things happened differently. And don't be afraid. Don't give a fuck about what other people think and don't be afraid to put yourself out there and gain new experiences and sing in, pro- sing in front of people that you might be scared to sing in front of. Mm-hmm. I love that word soul growth. I've never heard or words. I've never heard that phrase before. That is awesome. Yeah. Anyway, uh, gentlemen, either one. Um, I would, ha- I would urge myself to, you know, keep hanging with the boys <laughs> and, uh, probably get into a, a, a church band and, stick with it like really stick with it um i see so many church musicians that are just like out of this world amazing nowadays and um yeah while i was 15 i was playing in this reggae church band and i mean the amount of practice that you get and real interaction with human beings and learning how to move them and what they respond to like i would have taken that route um and also explore just like don't think that being a bedroom guitarist is like the best version of of the musician that you can be like a lot of the stuff that you put into your bag of tricks is stuff that you like learn by the seat of your pants you know live in front of people so just develop that instinct improvise keep hanging with the boys because that's a big one and uh explore explore a lot that's huge. It, it, don't stay al- home in, in almost five years of doing this i've never had anybody answer that question just keep hanging with the boys. <laughs> You'll be fine. The boys, that was the, they were like, yeah, they were like like-minded men, just like me. You know, they all liked either right drums, on. singing, guitar, oh, bass, you cool, know, rap, all that. So, Angelino, Angelito. See, <laughs> wait, Angelito. 
I pronounce it right? Anyway. <laughs> Let's talk to little exist more. <laughs> I like that. Little, little EM. Uh, so uh, I cannot stress this enough to musicians. Take the time to practice that monotonous crap over and over and over. Because you're training your body's muscle memory to do that stuff. And then when it comes time in the spot to do it with a song, it just comes naturally. You don't have to like, think about what the hell you're doing. So, And you'll be so rock solid on that that yeah. given those little moments to impress people is way easier. Yeah, like... Because uh, you, have, you have a foundation to come back to. Yeah, like growing up on guitar, I would literally train my hands individually to do like scales and then like jump around on the strings and then I put the two together and then I would try to play songs now that my hands know how to do that and I do the same thing with drums just like do the boring ass stuff that you don't want to do because then when you're actually playing a song your hands just already go there and do it so do yeah. all the monotonous boring stuff it makes playing easier it makes it more fun just get it out of the way yeah. it's not the sexy real. part of doing it yeah real <laughs> it's not the sexy part of doing it but yeah, and the, it's the hardest thing to do, in my opinion, especially if you don't have, like, a teacher, lessons you're going to where yeah. you're going to be called to task. You're the only one, you know, who, that's the hardest thing is it's just you against you. So yeah, Discipline have... is how you bring creativity down to earth. Remember I... that, discipline, creativity, down to earth. earth. I have do. one more thing to add to tell to my younger self. You have ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> go, go get diagnosed. Shiny, shiny, shiny. Go get, get diagnosed. Get... <laughs> It'll help you further down the line. Was... I'm like just now, the past year or two, getting a hold on my ADHD. It's fucking gnarly. Anyways, here's to prescription medicine. I, I hate will it. never Thank cheers you. to prescription medicine. I'm no. Sorry. Listen, <laughs> I'm not one of those. Listen, people. Hitler hater. <laughs> Hater. That, that's, a, that's a whole inside joke. Give me, give me a clink. I'll clink to you. And here's to you. Thank you for sticking in there. Um, stick around. We're gonna see them upstairs performing, and then yeah. we'll catch you on the outro. Uh, and thank you for coming on the channel. Thanks I appreciate you us. all. Yeah, thank it was you really for fun. Thanks thank for the you, contest. <laughs> a lot of fun. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you upstairs in room six. Uh, temporarily say goodbye. <laughs> temporarily say goodbye. There you go. Hey, we're Kook, and this is Little Big League. One, two.
that I would be A twenty-something and feeling so undone So So
every sense Yet I find asylum between your lips I want to thank Kook for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and an awesome performance. If you want to know more about them, hit the social media links down in the description. If you want to come on the channel, hit me up. And if you want to see more videos like this, click up there. If you want to subscribe, you know it makes a difference, click over there. And please, ring the bell so you'll know when I post new stuff. Where I are all these things? Okay, my bad. And if you want to hear my own music, which is not nearly as good as theirs, click over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Cheers. Bye, guys. Bye. Peace. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.